Welcome to today's webinar, Digital Strategies to Engage the Savvy Traveler. Most travel companies today recognize that digital is now core to their overall business and to meeting the needs and expectations of their customers. We wanted to talk about travel trends specifically. Travel is the industry with the highest percentage of overall revenue coming from online, making digital core to travel companies' revenue and as a result, travel tends to be beating the e-commerce industry in terms of digital marketing spend, initiatives, and expertise. So travel is always a great sector to look at to know what is happening in digital. At the same time, travel is also the highest booking abandonment rate from the industry with more than 86% of people with something in their booking funnel abandoning before converting, which means that for travel, more than for any other industry, creating multiple touch points throughout the customer digital journey and being able to re-engage with customers on-site and off-site, wherever they are, is key to travel companies to get conversions over their competitors. Today, I'll be moderating the session and we'll discuss with Lisa DiPaolo and Tom LaFarge the most innovative strategies to engage the traveling customer. But before we get started, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. If you're tweeting with us, tweet using the handle at CyberInc and the hashtag, hashtag Savvy Traveler. Also, we will make sure to make time for questions at the end of the webinar, so please submit your questions in the GoToWebinar chat panel. That should be available on your screen now. And last but not least, we're recording this webinar and we'll make it available to you for later playback and sharing. So let's get started and meet our main speakers for today, Lisa and Tom. Lisa is the VP of Travel Sales here at Saiba, and we also have Tom Fard, who is the Product Marketing Manager here at Saiba. For our agenda today, we will be looking into what it takes to increase conversions for the travel sector through managing the overall customer journey, being proactive with personalization, going mobile, understanding how millennials are reshaping the industry, and ways to have a stronger brand presence through social media advertising. Now let's toss it back over to Lisa and Tom to learn more about these top tips and strategies on how to effectively use them. Great, thank you, Connor, and thank you everyone for joining us today. So um, the reason also why we decided to talk about travel trends today and how to best engage with uh, savvy travelers is because Saiba represented by Lisa, uh, VP of Travel Sales, who is, uh, who is with us today, was one of only six Amadeus partners to be invited to their big airline ex executive summit event that they organized in June in Prague. So during this event, they had about 200 international airline companies that got together for a week to discuss up and coming trends in the travel industry. And so, well, you know, we wanted to share and discuss with you some of the subjects that were addressed during this conference and also talk about other key uh, travel trends that we've identified by working with a lot of airline, ticketing, and other uh, travel companies. So now looking at our, our first uh, trend or subject for today, um, during the Amadeus uh, Executive Summit, both Adobe and Facebook discussed the need to get the customer touch points right and talk about how with the multitude of touch points available, it is key to interact with travelers where they are and to create the personalized, convenient and fast interactions that travelers are looking for. Uh, well, we at Saiba have also been talking uh, for a while now about how to manage this overall customer journey. And as you know, we offer this full uh, funnel solution to, to help address that. And we've always been, you know, advocating and telling our client about how central uh, it is to the customer experience of a brand to be able to engage with customer throughout the digital journey. And just to give you an idea, uh, the average retail customer makes 9.5 visits to a website before buying. For travel, it's actually even higher, with the average booker going through almost 40 uh, different touch points with a number of different providers before actually booking a trip, and this usually over a six-week period. So again, that really points out how important it is to be able to engage and re-engage with bookers where they are online and to provide a seamless experience across all interactions. So from 
uh, SEM to website visits to on-site engagement, retargeting, paid social, email remarketing, and, and actually a lot more. Also, uh, since the customer journey is never linear, data on purchase intent, on-site behavior, past transaction, all of that should be used to target and personalize each message to each customer. An interesting stat here is that 84% of marketing executives say that they plan on developing a process to help them map their rich media content uh, assets to the buyer journey uh, stage. Here, it's really important to be able to identify where customers are on their journey and be able to provide them with the right message or information at the right time in the right context, irrespective of the, the channel. Here, the point being not to cycle abandoners back through the whole acquisition uh, process every time they abandon, but being able to drop them back exactly where they left off, uh, helping them complete their journey by guiding them down the marketing funnel, and obviously in the end, helping them uh, complete their transaction. So that's it for the, the connected experience. Another big subject that uh, was discussed at the, the Amadeus event, uh, Lisa, it was uh, customization and to be more accurate, personalization. Yes, yeah, that's absolutely right. So per personalization was perhaps the most popular topic in the keynote and education sessions uh, and across the Amadeus show overall, really. Um, everyone's just wanting to know how to get closer to consumers to provide a relevant, differentiated experience. Um, really, the main idea of personalization there was to enable airlines to intelligently price, position, and promote their products and services, so that others, uh, so that so that offers are more likely to meet individualized customer needs. Um, a few interesting stats that we took away: one was that more than half of the airline executives surveyed in a report published by Amadeus and Skift um, said. They expect this evolution to increase passenger revenue by 15% or more. Um, and then also, according to an uh, e-consultancy and Adobe quarterly digital intelligence briefing on personalization, 59% of marketers said the ability to personalize was fundamental to their online strategy. Meanwhile, 29% weren't doing any personalization. So the notion is affirmed. We just need to take a, a better action on this. Um, and lastly, according to HubSpot, companies that offer personalization see an average uplift of 19% in sales. So while customization is great um, on the personal spectrum, uh, spectrum, we know that extra that extra step to personalization really is key. And Saiba's always been advocating for this as well. Um, and with the increase in data availability, this enables us to know much more about travelers and guests so we can personalize at scale. Um, so it's more than a nice to have, personalization is actually now a necessity for us. Uh, we use first, second, and third party data that um, we help companies in the travel industry apply personalization through with our on-site email and display prospecting and retargeting solutions. We use customer information gathered both from past and current interactions with our clients' sites as well as uh, through third-party data partners um, to customize the shopping experience with proactive personalization throughout really all aspects of the customer journey. So looking at a few uh, uh, different solutions we have for Cape Air, for instance, um, our on-site engagement, um, for example, you can base your on-site engagement on buyer profiles and segments and use different messaging and imagery to reach your target audience. Really personalizing your solution based on your customer's location or interest, device type, um, where they abandon from, et cetera. For Cape Air, we've been able to target based on destination and overall route. Um, other campaigns are departure days of the week, months of the year, flight class, and number of passengers. Um, another example I've done with some of my clients who prefer their app experience versus their mobile site is using our on-site engagement solution to increase the number of mobile app downloads by segmenting it based on customers' devices. So for people using an Apple device, we can automatically direct 
um, them to the Apple Store versus Android users, which we can direct to the Google Play Store. So this removes any friction in the user journey and encourages users to download the app without having to find the correct link themselves or searching for the app on the right store. Um, as far as email marketing and remarketing, you can personalize these to target customers that abandon their carts by leveraging your customers' on-site interactions to determine alternative promotions and specific messaging. Similar tactics that I mentioned previously with, with the on-site engagement, such as focusing on booking details um, in particular, work really great. But alternatively, some interesting examples are uh, segmenting a campaign for a premier traveler, for instance. So if the total cost of a booking they were interested in exceeds a certain amount, offer access to the business lounge or complimentary dinner at the hotel. Or if the booking is less than a given amount, offer just a free cocktail upon arrival. Um, if the customer was looking to check out on a Sunday and you need to boost your Sunday night stays, offer them an incentive to stay one more night and book that Sunday night as well. So those are just some examples. Um, in addition, you can also use the email to push your app, um, perhaps a loyalty card or other hotel properties in a given destination, or maybe alternative flight dates for lower fares or other options. Great, and so in addition to on-site and email remarketing, we also uh, helping KPair with their display prospecting and, and retargeting campaigns. And obviously uh, for display advertising, personalization is also key. So here we'll be using first, second, and third party data to be able to uh, personalize both the prospecting and the retargeting ads and uh, especially for display advertising with customers being solicited by so many advertisers you really need to have targeted relevant and personalized uh, ads to get you know uh, your prospective customers uh, attention and, and and get get them to to uh, notice your ad so uh, with retargeting Obviously, as you know, the objective is to put relevant ads in front of people who have recently engaged uh, with your website but haven't completed the desired engagement yet. So by engagement, it can be they haven't filled uh, out a lead form yet, they haven't booked a meeting, or they haven't converted yet. And so what we do here is we use first-party data to uh, be able to target and personalize the ad. So what we do is we look at well, what your customer interests were, where they abandoned from, what specific offers uh, they looked at, to then show them the specific hotel room, destination, tickets, or events that they should interest in. And what we can do is even show them uh, an alternative product that they could be interested in based on the information we have collected on their interest. For prospecting, it's a little bit different here. We're not using first party data, or well, actually, we we could be using first party data, but we mainly use second and third party data. Here, looking at social demographics, online behavior, online interest, purchase intent, all of that to make sure that we reach the right audience segments and show them the most relevant and targeted ads uh, again. And to further personalize, what we've also been doing is include things like weather conditions, time of the day, year, and hyper local uh, geo targeting. So here what we do is that we uh, personalize not only based, again, on your customer interest and all of that, but also based on their uh, location. So based on the, the, the country, state, city, or even zip code. And then uh, based on that, for example, what we've done for a ticketing client was, was show them, uh, show to their client a product recommendation from a list of attraction in the city where the customer were located. And for an airline company, what we did was show the most popular flights from again the customer city of location so again not only is it personalized targeted but it's also you know really relevant based on things like location and, and weather that covers it for, for this uh, big trend the, the other big big trend in travel is mobile mobile that uh, is truly the is truly at the, the heart of the travel customer journey and is key to the customer experience as more and more travelers especially millennials use their phones to not only plan and book their trips, but also to find their way around, to find uh, things to do while they are on vacation, and also very important to share their experience on social media. But just before we talk about how to reach travelers on mobile and how to cater your, your content for this, 
just want to go back to the Amadeus event again, Lisa, and uh, again, one of the big uh, conversation there was on-the-go notifications on mobile devices. Yes, that was certainly a hot topic at the summit as well. I mean, we all know what it's like to juggle all the segmented fragmented pieces of a travel experience with getting to your terminal, the gate, security lines, gate changes, you know, transportation to and from the airport, parking, et cetera. It's, it's difficult enough when all the pieces stay as planned, but then there's, there's the juggling of all the inevitable changes that end up occurring along the way as well. So that's why it's important to provide your customers with on-the-go support as much as possible. Um, pushing notifications in real time to customers' mobile devices through either text or email to not only keep them informed of travel changes, but to pull these segments together for a more seamless experience. So maybe inform them of how to find the gate to their connecting flight or how to find their gate, uh, their new gate if the flight has changed. Um, offer up different means of transportation to their hotel or wherever they're going thereafter or where to find those options. Offer them a way to reserve dinner for two on their way to the, to the hotel. Um, and for those unfortunate, unexpected travel changes, consider pushing them some kind of small credit or gift for the inconvenience to help alleviate their stress um, and also to protect your brand. So however you choose to incorporate this into your strategy, protecting that experience both on and off your site for, for your customers is essential to optimum customer loyalty. Great. So again, mobile key for all of that, but also key for your conversion, for your revenue. Um, so here, interesting stats uh, from Adobe. For every one out of every $5 spent online in travel is actually through mobile devices. And smartphones have even take, overtaken tablets for percentage of sales booked for travel. So again, what this means is that while well, travel company must not only make sure that their mobile experience make it easy for the customers to uh, book their trips, event, all of that on their mobile devices, but they also need to make sure that they create and prioritize mobile optimized content and also create editorial style content that will integrate easily into social media and will help build uh, social stories. Again, millennials are not only booking, uh, on their phone, they also are using their phone to find their way around, but they're also um, using it to find inspiration, to find ideas where to travel. And the great thing also with social media is that uh, not only it's the best way to reach them, but it's also uh, the best way to reach them on mobile devices as uh, well now that's mainly where they, they, they go on that kind of uh, platforms. So just coming back quickly to uh, editorial style content that I was mentioning uh, earlier, what is it? Well, it's think inspirational lifestyle video and Instagrammable images. The more traditional hotel photography, where you know you take pictures of your uh, clean rooms and, and, and crisp beds, all of that, still work and it's so important. But it won't work into building stories and reaching millennials and reaching them on, on social media. Uh, on social media, I'm sorry. So that brings us now to uh, another big trend, which is uh, millennials and how they're reshaping the, the industry. Um, so according to a study from the American Society of uh, Travel Agents, you can see all the stats here, in 2016, millennials took 44% more holiday time and trips than the average baby boomer. And while all the generations still consider traveling a luxury, for millennials, it's more of a really an integral part of their, of their lives. The, also, the other big difference in the way millennials travel is that while they see travel as a way to develop life and work skills with them seeking experiences beyond just the you know traditional tours and activities and so with this desire that they have now to experience things and this being a big part of the decision making process for where they are going to go uh, or what destination they are going to go or what hotel they, they are going to stay at well so you, you again need to uh, be able to reach them by telling them that kind of story and telling them about the experiences that you, you, your business will offer them more than the, the product, the service in itself. Um, still according to the study from, uh, from the American Society of Travel Agents, 
millennials also say they want to stay connected online during their vacation, with 52% of them saying that uh, free Wi-Fi is being available at a, at a hotel, it plays a big role in their decision making. Uh, another interesting stat is that 89% of millennials uh, were inspired to plan travel activities by looking at online travel content after booking their vacation. So what this means is that, well, millennials stay connected during their vacation, but also you really should capitalize on this to reach them while they're traveling to, again, give them ideas of what to do, uh, to, you know, uh, sell more of your products, but also to get free advertising by using all that user-generated content that they create. Uh, so well, what you need to do for that, obviously, what well, you need to keep your social media pages active, you need to actively spend time and money managing uh, all of that, which brings us to uh, our next and last yeah, uh, trend social advertising so now we'll be looking at how to engage with uh, millennials but travelers in general organically and also through uh, paid social great yeah and so let's start with an interesting stat um 60 of travel companies are now using instagram as part of their marketing strategies as travel consumers are now massively on instagram or facebook looking for travel inspiration which actually seems low in my opinion, just given how prominent a position social media really has in our lives, and especially with regard to travel. Um, but uh, we all know travels are now uh, travelers are now sharing and, and consuming more content on more channels and devices than ever. With 42% uh, of millennials saying that vacation photos posted by friends on social channels have some influence on where they go on vacation, this shows again that social really is key for travel advertising and is certainly here to stay. Um, travelers, of course, want to share their experiences in favorite places with their friends and their social network. They post pictures and videos publicly on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, as you know, um, but also love to give reviews on the restaurants, the places or activities they've experienced. And this, by the way, is whether they had a great or a poor experience, uh, which therefore can have significant implications for the travel sector, as you can imagine. So all travel companies should have their own Facebook and Instagram pages to grow customer loyalty and really develop that bond with their existing customers. Also, of course, to grow brand awareness um, and reach those prospective customers as well. So you can do this organically by creating editorial style content like we mentioned earlier, or as well by adopting other strategies. So let's talk a little bit about those different tactics. Um, first things first, make sure to fill out your social media accounts bio and be sure to include a link to your website. You really need to take the time to think about how you want to introduce your brand. What is the message or the tone you really want to get across with this account? Just remember this may be your, your audience's first first impression of your brand, so it'll be key in drawing people to follow your account or to decide otherwise. Um, so then comes posting. Make sure you have a hashtag strategy that will help you be discoverable and gain traction. We recommend thinking of about 30 hashtags you can use in your posts. We're not saying you should use all 30 of them, uh, but make sure to use a good amount as this is a great way for your posts to be found by people who might not yet know you but are looking via hashtags for new ideas, pictures, experiences, etc. So some of the most popular hashtags for travel, not surprisingly, hashtag travel, which has 300 million followers, um, followed by hashtag trip with 82 million, hashtag vacation with 81 million. Um, while these are really great in volume, you know, they're pretty generic. And so if you really want to call out a specific niche or certain um, criteria about your business in particular, you should definitely consider a more a custom type of hashtag. So some of the, the less popular but more interesting hashtags out there are hashtag love to travel, hashtag open my world, um, hashtag go explore. So those have a couple million followers, still a decent amount of volume, but your brand won't get kind of washed out with um, you know, too much volume. Um, 
Then also make sure to reshare or also called regram your customers post their pictures. And of course, don't forget to give them a nice little shout out in the process. Um, you can even try to incentivize them to share their experiences and pictures with you. Not only is that a cost effective way to advertise, but these more authentic photos will increase uh, prospective customer buy-in for sure. Um, because while praising your own brand is, is great, people love to hear what others have to say. So better coming from your loyal followers than just from your own business. Um, and of course, be sure to promote your own hashtags, which will make communication between you and your followers easier and more direct and will encourage customers to share stories about their, their travel experiences with you. So pick catchy and unique hashtags, use them in all of your posts. This is definitely the best way to have your clients working for you, creating content and sharing it with their followers. Again, the more authentic, the more impactful. Great. And so um, in addition to this whole hashtag strategy that you should definitely uh, think about and, and use, another way that you can grow your reach and engagement is also to encourage followers to tag their friends in your post. So don't abuse it. But uh, what you can do for that is every so often post a picture with a comment like, you know, tag a friend with whom you'd like to be there or tag a friend with dream vacation this is and any other kind of uh, variations of that. Again, kind of like a great way to get noticed by more people as they get tagged in your post, so they'll see the post. And also it's just a, a good way to create engagement uh, with your followers uh, overall. Uh, what also you should be doing is include calls to action in your post to get people to click on the link in your bio that Lisa mentioned earlier so that they get redirected to your site. Uh, the reason, the main reason, for this is that well, without paying to sponsor your content, Instagram images are not clickable. So that's, that's a little bit of an issue to move uh, consumers, prospective clients from the awareness phase on Instagram to the action phase on your site. So we'll mention actually paid social in a minute and, and how you can use that to redirect them this way. But otherwise, you know, just make sure to use lower action words in your uh, post, like, you know, learn more, find out, register, and then direct your uh, followers to the link in your bio. Uh, also, what's really important for Instagram is interaction. It's actually really hard uh, Instagram differentiate from Facebook. You have a lot more uh, comments and interaction with your posts on Instagram than uh, other social media. So make sure to capitalize on that. Make sure to respond to any comments you would get on your post and obviously try to encourage additional interaction. Uh, so now moving on to paid social. A uh, couple of really impressive numbers here. 800 million monthly uh, global, 800 million global monthly active users on uh, in Instagram and 60 million uh, monthly uh, photos posted. That's Obviously impressive. That's also why you know you need to be advertising on social media and especially on Instagram, especially for travel. But also it is a bit of an issue because now it's getting harder to get organic growth and to get traction on Instagram uh, without a little bit of paid social. So um, with paid advertising, what you, you are able to do is well target specific audience segments and then push your posts, your offering, your stories to uh, these segments that are not your followers yet. So that, again, allow you to uh, grow your reach, grow your brand awareness, and you can even do specific campaigns to create um, specific action like app installs, for example. Uh, also, as I was mentioning earlier, with paid content, the great thing is that well, a customer can take action by when they click on the, on, on the post, which is not possible with the organic post. Um, Another big improvement now with Instagram is the amount of data available to target prospective customers. Initially, the amount of data available on Instagram uh, wasn't all that great, but as you know, Facebook acquired Instagram uh, a little while ago. If you remember at the time, it was for a billion dollars, which seemed crazy, but now given the, you know, the growth of Instagram and the revenue it's bringing, it doesn't seem that crazy anymore. So now uh, most Instagram accounts are linked to uh, Facebook accounts, which means that 
but you now have access to all of that really powerful Facebook uh, targeting data. Uh, Facebook targeting data and Facebook advertising that we've already talked about in different webinars and uh, we you should definitely also reach out to uh, our team, your account manager, if you want to know more about Facebook uh, advertising. Uh, last way also to do paid social. Here it's not directly through the, the Facebook platform, the Instagram platform, but through uh, Influencer. That uh, has been pretty popular, especially for travel. So what uh, big, you know, travel companies do now is reach out to those uh, influencers that have like a, you know, a large number of, of followers. They also now reach out to more micro-influencers, so people with less than 50,000 followers. I know it's not, <laughs> still pretty big to me, but, and then here what you do is simply, you know, like either you can pay them for that, offer them free, free stays, trials, in exchange for them to share their experience uh, your hotel with your airline or all of that. Uh, again, it does get a lot of traction and it's also a great way to get to people because they will trust their favorite uh, Instagram uh, Instagram accounts. So that's it for uh, our webinar today. Uh, it's 1.34 already, so we are running out of time a little bit, but let's see if we got a few questions, uh, Connor. Uh, okay, so we have time for us to take a few questions here before we finally wrap up. Uh, the first question I have is, you've talked about Instagram a lot. What about Facebook advertising would you recommend for travel companies? Yeah, uh, good question. So I was mentioning how we can definitely help with Facebook advertising. Again, for travel, Instagram is great because that's where people go to, you know, uh, find inspiration, to know what's happening, what's trending. Uh, again, the great thing with Facebook and Instagram, it's actually it's owned by the same company, so you can easily do campaigns on both network. Uh, you can use the same data. Um, so definitely Facebook, you should also be on Facebook. You should also have your own social media page. You should also be paying for to push your content, especially because Facebook now is limiting uh, how much you can push your organic content. So uh, again, we can definitely help you with both. We have uh, people in our trading team that are specialized on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest too, actually is a good other one. So um, yeah, I hope I answered the question on that one. Uh, another question we have here uh, is, how do you measure performance and what types of criteria are best to use for personalization? Yeah. I'll jump in on that. That's a great question. Um, so I think, you know, while there are certain trends that have been affirmed that we're all aware of, and while you have your own theories, just drawn from your own experiences, that you should just always be testing. So um, at Cyber, we do a lot of testing. We do ongoing A-B tests. We're looking to compare um, metrics constantly. So whether it's campaign to campaign with different creatives, different messaging to different targets and segments. Um, we do incremental uplift testing, so we're testing against organic traffic to make sure that the different strategies we have in place are in fact providing um, a lift on the client side. Um, you know, testing against just benchmark stats that you're ultimately looking to achieve. So as long as you're continuously looking to try out different strategies and continue to prove them out and prove their worth, then you know that you're operating on the most optimized, most uh, powerful and successful, impactful um, level of campaigning that you possibly can achieve. Great. So that's all the time we have for today. Uh, we are getting a few comments about getting slides. Don't worry, as I mentioned uh, earlier on in the webinar, we will email you the full recording of this presentation and for later playback and sharing. Uh, finally, I would like to thank Lisa and Tom for taking time to talk with us today. And of course, I would also like to thank our audience for joining us today. You can continue the conversation with us on Twitter or email us at marketing at to get more information on all of this work and uh, to start a setup with, to work with our team of experts here at Cyber. Um, stay tuned for our future upcoming webinars. Thank you and we hope to see you soon. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.